five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, Hey, everybody. It's the Ramble. It's with Alex. That's what it says there. And we're here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time, on the left coast, uh, on the right coast of the United States, where we are, I guess, infection city. I mean, we are just, we're ground zero. Um, and, um, um, uh, you know, I, in a very Donald Trump way, I've got to say, USA is the best. We have now surpassed China in the number of people that have the coronavirus. Uh, but we'll talk about all that later. I've not been out of this apartment for 10 days, okay? So today I thought I would venture out, and as we did last time when we ventured out, we decided that we would just kind of, uh, you know, uh, show you around my neighborhood one more time. Okay, and that won't start. Okay, well then it will start if I do this. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, this is my first time out in how many days? Uh, 10 days. Lock up. Okay. <sighs> this is our anniversary, by the way. Yeah, happy anniversary. Okay, come on. Okay. Do it. Okay. Uh, ta -da -da. <laughs> Where's your gloves? Oh, my gloves are right here. Okay. Here we are. Happy anniversary. Uh, I love you. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Oh, this is pathetic. That's the quarantine kiss. Yeah, wait until you see the trees and all mm. the pollen and everything that's out today. Really? Yeah. Anyway, so we're going out for a, a, a walk. Again. My first time in 10 days, Please. ladies and gentlemen. I've been in the house for 10 days. This is the new normal. Mm -hmm. This is our anniversary day, and we're taking an anniversary walk. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oops, yeah. there, oops, my finger's in the way. <laughs> oh, boy. Come on. And then you get dressed again. Huh? I put the chicken in. You put the chicken in? We're having chicken. She's making chicken for our anniversary. Oven roasted. Huh? Oven roasted. Yeah. Well, let me see. Uh, is it the... You were less than six feet, dear. All right. Huh? I'm six feet from you. No, well, that <laughs> it doesn't matter because, you know, we sleep one inch from each other, so. Well. We're taking a one walk. Life seems to be going on out well, here. It is, but it's, it's not the jam packed that you think of. But wait until you see 117th Street, all the blossoms. Because there weren't any blossoms last week. Alright, just... Okay. Mountain Street. Well, there's not and much... We're in the middle of the block, you'll see, when yeah. we get to the middle of the block. It's not much traffic. That kind of st oh, I see where they're starting to bloom. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be. Quieter in the morning. And nobody here are wearing masks but us. We're seniors. Hmm? We're seniors, that's why. This morning everyone was wearing masks. Really? When I went out with Teresa, a lot of people were wearing masks. Really? Yeah. Oh. Not the runners or the bikers, but the people that were, you know, going to the supermarket and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This is why I'm sneezing. Yeah. Because the trees are starting to get into bloom. Yeah, see it? Yeah. Let me see here. Well, this street's not any more quiet or unquiet than 
usually is. are in bloom. When I was here last, they weren't in bloom. That's pretty cool. Where's the, uh, where's my, huh? Look at this. Yeah, I know. Spring is in the air. That's dangerous. I'm too close to you. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, life goes on, I guess, huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah? But your immune system is too compromised. That's why you've got to take care of yourself. And me, too. I mean, I've got COPD or whatever it's called. COPD. COPD. Well, I also have one other thing. I'm 80 years old. Yeah. I'm close to it. I'm close behind you. Yeah. I hear them. What? I hear them chirping. Oh, they're in the bushes right there. Yeah. Are they wearing face masks? Are they Not keeping yet. are they keeping six feet away from each other? Not yet. Animals are laughing at us right now. <laughs> what was the chicken disease in China like ten or so years ago? Bird flu. Bird flu. Yeah. That started in China too, right? Yeah. Hi. Happy anniversary. I always thought it was funny. It was called bird flu. Birds do fly. <laughs> <laughs> Birds flu. Gotta <laughs> kill all this. Is that an apartment building over there? Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be. It, I think it's less quiet than it was when I was out here 10 days ago. Well, it's, it's less quiet than when I was out with Teresa. But see it's, how they're standing at the supermarket? They're only letting certain many people in. Oh, see. let's go. Yeah. Wow. You have to wait in the line to get into the supermarket. So wait a minute. When you go there... I go at 7 in the morning. You go at 7 in the morning? And like uh, a few days ago, there were three people. And the other day, there were about 12 people. But we all stood... How many do they let in at a time? I don't know, because I was in the first group. And we were, you know, just yeah. covering it us all. Look at that. A line to get into the grocery store. That's amazing. It's quite a line, too. In fact, it goes... Uh, let me see if I can show you. I'm trying to... It actually goes around the corner and down the block a little bit of people waiting to get into so the Fine Fair supermarket. Wow. Huh. Did you notice that the line actually goes all the way around the block? Oh, just a few. Yeah. yeah. But in the morning, it's 7 o'clock. How many people are they letting in at a time? I don't know. You want to go this way? Let's go this way. No, I don't like that street. Well, no, we'll take that street because I can see, we can see more people. Oh, look at the subway. What? What? What, they're not letting people in the subway? I don't know. Huh? I don't know, but all the subways are take. Maybe certain stops. Wow. I can't imagine that anybody's taking them. Well, I've seen pictures of people sitting in the subways and buses. Yeah. But they may have stopped it. I kind of like the black I mask. Do too. We gotta get those. <laughs> I, I, everybody. It's kind of cool looking. You know, what we should go in the business of is making stylish masks. Oh, they've done that in China for years. You know, but this is a this is a deadly. Look at this. It's all taped off. Oh, it's also not the gate? No, there's no gates. Crime scene, it says. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Maybe there was a crime scene there. Well, two little boys went and found yeah. some river, and they haven't found their bodies. Oh, really? Yeah, Teresa showed me those pictures all over the park. Wow. So. See, they're letting them in free, but you can't get in the front part. Why can't you get in the front part? Because the driver has to be there and he has to be safe. Wow. And they're letting people in free? Yeah. It's a free ride for everybody? Sure. Was that six feet? Was that six feet? I guess so. This guy's taking a break. Well, oh. so you can ride the bus for free now. Yeah. Because they don't want anybody coming in the front where they're going to... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here we go. This is Amy Roots. How do we describe Amy Roots? Originally, it was a soul restaurant that was very good, but now it's like a tourist place. Yeah. They have takeout from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. But, uh... I'll tell you what was really good, but it was expensive. What? Last week when we did um, Popeyes. Popeyes. Uh, we must have plopped that down like in 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, it's good. They don't call it fast food for nothing. <laughs> you know. And uh, now this is interesting. Over here. Yeah, yeah. That's an old age home right there. Got an ambulance, but you have cop cars there too. But are they at the old folks home or where are they? But we had an uh, ambulance. Ah, oh, well. Anyway. This is the new normal. This is our new this normal. This is the new normal. Yeah. And my gloves don't work. The little tip, tip, tip. By the way, what's what's wonderful about this uh, iPhone is that it opens up because it recognizes you. But when I have my face mask on, I know it didn't it recognize. It doesn't recognize yeah, me. I had the same thing. And then with rubber gloves, it was hard to punch in. Will it work with the rubber gloves? It does, but with the punch in, you can't. You know. Well, I have to use the gloves, and instead these things. Uh, I these, don't want you touching these. Your... These gloves I bought. Yeah. They have, see? The tips. Yeah, but it doesn't work with this phone for some reason. Maybe that was for the old phone. Um, when we get to the gate, don't touch anything. Let me open the gate. Oh, okay. Do you think we caught anything? No. Look, everything's shut. Yep. Well, that police is open. Let's take out, yeah. But they actually had a line in front of our supermarket. Yeah. And how many are they letting in at this time? I don't know. But they have a big black line about 10 feet from the cash register. And you have to stand behind it. And then when that person checks out, then they let the next person come in. It looks like some people just don't care. Look at this outfit. <laughs> Only in New York. Only in New York. I didn't show the people the guy who was in some kind of weird outfit. But that's what happens when the apocalypse is at hand. Anything goes. And that's our little walk for today, folks. That's it. Wasn't that interesting?
And kids as usual, just start kids doing stuff. Here they go. Well, we're back home and happy anniversary, dear. Happy anniversary. And that was our little trip in our neighborhood today. So th thank you for all joining me on it. Um, listen, I'm going to do something before we go to our citizen panel. Um, Rob Alfano, who's finally put his studio back together and I think is getting itchy to do stuff, did something today. He was uh, watching CNN, and they had a whole bunch of quotes of Donald Trump. So he took those quotes, and he gave his own spin to them and has made kind of a little, what could we call it, a, a, uh, a conglomeration. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, 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 a pastiche of, of just the wonderful things that Donald Trump has said and done during this coronavirus situation. And we thought, uh, well, you know, maybe you'd like to hear it, okay? Here is our good friend, Rob Alfano. Well, wait a minute, let me try to start it up again. The go. coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is the most catastrophic event in our lifetime. The Trump administration refuses to take responsibility for how it has played out since we first learned about the virus. The president hopes that America's attention span is short regarding his public comments. But the microphones were running, and they captured the truth. What follows is a look at the evolution of the president's position on the COVID-19 pandemic. We start on January 22nd with only one recorded case in the United States. The CDC uh, has identified a case of coronavirus uh, in Washington State, the Wuhan. Are and, there words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China. On January 30th, there are now five recorded cases in the United States. We only have five people. Hopefully everything's going to be great. They have somewhat of a problem, but hopefully it's all going to be great. On February 10th, with now 12 recorded the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is the most catastrophic event in our lifetime. Sorry about that, folks, because I did a little screw up there. But let's start it over again. All right. I'm just trying to get the volume down on this thing a little bit. OK, here we go. We have to start it from the top. The coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is the most catastrophic event in our lifetime. The Trump administration refuses to take responsibility for how it has played out since we first learned about the virus. The president hopes that America's attention span is short regarding his public comments. But the microphones were running and they captured the truth. What follows is a look at the evolution of the president's position on the COVID-19 pandemic. We start on January 22nd with only one recorded case in the United States. The CDC uh, has identified a case of coronavirus uh, in Washington State, the Wuhan. Are and, there words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China. On January 30th, there are now five recorded cases in the United States. We only have five people. Hopefully everything's going to be great. They have somewhat of a problem, but hopefully it's all going to be great. On February 10th, with now 12 recorded cases in the United States, the president said this. The virus, they're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. But we're doing great in our country. As Americans celebrate Valentine's Day, we reach 15 cases here in the United States. What do you have a very small number of people in the country right now with it? It's like around 12. Many of them are getting better. Some are fully recovered already. 11 days later, on February 25th, the reported cases jumped up to 53 in the United States. The uh, coronavirus, which is uh, you know, very well under control in our country. We uh, have very few people with it. The people are getting better. At this point, the president places Vice President Pence in charge of the coronavirus task force. The virus continues its progression. 
On February 26th, the number of cases is up to 56. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. And we have the greatest experts in the world, really in the world. We've had tremendous success, tremendous success beyond what people would have thought. Two days later, at one of Trump's political rallies, with the number of recorded cases up to 60, the president uses it as a political weapon against the Democrats. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. And so far, we have lost nobody to coronavirus in the United States. Nobody. And it doesn't mean we won't, and we are totally prepared. As the month of February comes to an end, the U.S. reports its first death from coronavirus, and the number of cases is now 67. Our country is prepared for any circumstance. We hope it's not going to be a major circumstance. It'll be a smaller circumstance, but whatever the circumstance is, we're prepared. As prepared as the president claimed the USA was, just five days later, the number of cases rises by more than 40% to 161. 11 Americans have lost their battle against coronavirus to date. You can't be a politician and shake hands. People come out, when I leave, I'll be shaking hands with people. They want to shake your hand. They want to say hello. They want to hug you. They want to kiss you. I don't care. It doesn't mean you have to do that. The following day, the number begins to increase at an alarming rate. In just one day, there were 66 additional cases, bringing the total to 227, with 14 dead. I think we're doing a really good job in this country at keeping it down. Uh, we've really been uh, very vigilant, and we've done a tremendous job at keeping it down. From January 22nd to now March 15th, with 1,000 cases reported and 31 dead, our president is finally catching on. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. Two days later, on March 13th, over 660 cases are recorded, bringing the total cases up to 1,666, with 41 Americans dead. Anyone can be a carrier for the virus and risk transmission to older Americans and those with underlying health conditions and those who are most at risk, they have not done very well. On March 16th, the total number of cases rose by nearly 2,000 people, totaling 3,616 with 65 dead. I'm glad to see that you're practicing social distancing. That looks very nice. And this afternoon, we're announcing new guidelines for every American to follow over the next 15 days as we combat the virus. The following day is St. Patrick's Day, with 4,477 cases and 87 dead, the president finally calls it a pandemic. This is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. One day we'll be standing possibly up here, we'll say, well, we won. And we're gonna say that. Sure as you're sitting there, we're gonna say that. The following day, with almost 2,000 more cases and almost 40 more dead, the president is at war. I, I view it as a, uh, in a sense, a wartime president. I mean, that's what we're fighting. Maybe Americans do have a short memory. Maybe we're bombarded by news cycle after news cycle that it's impossible to remember all of these moments. But this isn't fake news. These are the president's own words, and they are a public record. This isn't an attack by the left. This is fact. Our president is changing the paradigm in this country with regards to the truth. The new paradigm is, if you repeat something enough, regardless of the facts, it becomes the truth. Thank you very much. Rob Alfano uh, put that together with the help of some audio that came off of CNN. And uh, I think if that doesn't make you mad, I don't know what will. Um, I mean, this was a guy who's totally oblivious to the realities, you know. And uh, uh, to then say, well, I've always felt it was going to be a pandemic and blah, blah, blah. I mean, just the lying, the, the just horrible lying that goes on in this White House. 
has now put our entire society in jeopardy, okay, as it were, uh, because he's just not believable. And uh, you got, in a case like this, you got to have somebody who's believable who can rally the troops. Anyway, we're, our lines are open now for our uh, citizen panel. Um, after all the, so, sorry about that false start. What happened was, is I was trying to adjust the volume over here, and when on um, the thing that I use, it only it doesn't stop where I left off. <laughs> okay, it just keeps going. I'm going to see what I can do about that so I don't have that problem again. But thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate it and uh, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Who's calling me? Oh, hello. It's the guy who just you just heard from, folks. Uh, you are the guy that... Uh, that um, let me see here. Let me get uh, let me get him and let me give him a slot. Uh, uh, let me see here. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Rob Alfano. There's Rob. Okay, we'll do that. And then from Australia, right? Uh, Doc Winters, as we used to call him. You remember Doc? Uh, 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 Rob. I remember the name. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Doc, and there's Charlie Wallace. Let me see here. Let me also put, let's see, Charlie Wallace. Uh, boy, oh, God, everybody's calling really fast. Oh, here comes yep. Doc, uh, Doc again. Let's see here if we can get him on here. Josh Wheeler is calling. Let me see here. Oh, boy, everybody's calling all of a sudden. It's it. Uh, it it panics me. It panics me. Let me see here. Well, Ross Manuel, there we go. Uh, hello, Ross. How are you? Good to see you. He's uh, he's calling from uh, Australia, and that was one of the big countries that was hit as well. Let me let me first go get some of these other people in here. First of all, I got to get. Um, let's see here. Uh, I got to get. Um, oh, add that. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Just everybody, hold on a second while I I do this. It takes forever. Uh, first of all, uh, we got to go get. Uh, do we have Charlie? We have Dan. Dan. We have Ross. We have Rob. And we have. Uh, here comes uh, Phil. We'll put Phil in there. Come on. Oh God. I try to do this and it, it's all a big problem. Okay. And then uh, let's see here. Then we got Tony. He would be in the fifth place. Oh wow. Jeez. Almighty. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, we got to um, find... Uh, uh, let me see here. Wait a minute. So, uh, somebody's got their audio up. Uh, let me see here. Who, who don't we have here? Oh, here, here goes Webhead. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, let me see here. Let me, uh, let me let you people see what's going on. Here comes uh, uh, Jeff, who... Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me mm. put him in the sixth spot. Uh, and that would be this. Okay. And then we put Patrick Blazik is calling. Uh, wow. Boy, everybody, you're doing it too fast. I can't work this fast. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on a second. On the source six, what did I, what did I want on there? I wanted uh, that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Ah, there we go. And then I got to go to eight here and seven. It's going to be the Patrick. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Patrick, Darth Pat. Okay. And then finally in the eighth slot, um, here comes Bree. Let me see here. Cancel. Let me go Bree. Um Let's see here. What, boy, we got uh, so many people. Br Br Sorry, Let me get Bree here. Let me. Uh, okay, what? Whoever was turning up that sound, don't do it. Don't do it. There's Bree. Okay. Now it looks like. Look at that, folks. Already filled up. I, that's a lot of work for me to do all the while. Oh, here we go. Here comes. Here comes Kevin. So I got to put him in another slot. Um, uh, wow. Let me see here. Uh, that was that's it's, it's uh, what? Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on a second. 
Uh, eight. Uh, let's see here. Nine. I guess. Nine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was in there last night, so that works. I didn't even have to do anything because that's where he was, but I got to get rid of Br Where? Wait a minute. We got Bree in two spots here. We got Bree. Um, Double your place, huh? Oh, I see. That's probably because that's where he was last night. Okay. Um, uh, we just, uh, okay, cancel, and uh, I will, um, let me see here. Let me, let me get rid of uh, his second picture here, which will be gone in a moment. There we go. Okay, there we are. We got nine people, and that also makes it, of course, a full house ladies and gentlemen there we go all right am i right am i right that that's a full house yes it's a full house the people who can't see the show and are just listening to it it's got to be driving you crazy because i'm trying to make this thing go and and usually people don't call this fast and i can do it as we go but everybody jumped in immediately tonight uh <laughs> so hello to all of you and especially let's say a big hello to um Oh, you know who we haven't put in here? Oh, wow. Hold on a second. Uh, Josh Wheeler. Oh, boy. Um, hold on. Jo Josh Wheeler. I got, uh, where's Josh? Josh, Josh, Josh. What What? What name are you, you, you here? Oh, there we go. There he is. Okay. Then I do that. And, I think Tony uh, left. What? I think Tony left. Is Tony there? Tony? Are you there? Well, we'll keep. Yeah, he's he's gone. Well, we'll keep him there just so I don't have to do anything about that. Let me see here, and then also we got to change this from a, a full house to. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Ta da! A royal flush. Oh, wait a minute, I. No, I put, mm hmm. With Tony. Well, uh, we'll say Tony's in there because he'll probably call back and then automatically get put in that spot so right yeah. we'll call it a royal flush what the hell why not Once more and you'll have your jackpot huh <laughs> oh, don't don't do that i don't want to i this is about as many as i can take be honest yeah. with you without it really blowing itself apart and going sky high uh, but my cpu usage is pretty good so, you know anyway how are you all doing tonight are you all healthy anybody got the uh oh here yeah here comes tony again so he'll be there <laughs> Okay. Um, let me I'm let me do this. Shit. Okay. I'm gonna set the hand up rule right away with all these people. What the <laughs> hand up rule? Yeah, the hand up rule. Uh, you there? There you are, Tony. Okay. Oh, there. I, I yeah. got thrown off. I wasn't sure you got too many calls at once. No, 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 no. And what is what is what are you is Bree? What are you working on? You know, um, Alex, I have one of the first internet Wi-Fi internet radios that was ever produced. Mm -hmm. I have the portable and I have the desktop. And what happened is it no longer connects to Wi-Fi. It hasn't for, oh, I don't know, five, six years because all the Wi-Fi routers are too advanced. They're like on N. Yeah, you know, right, right, yeah. right. So this one needs an earlier version. So I read online that I can replace this USB dongle and it should still work. Now, I've already had one casualty. One of the buttons came, broke off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to super glue that in the future. But right now, I'm just taking out the old dongle, and I'm putting in a new one. Dongle sounds like a dirty word. I yeah. don't know why, <laughs> but it, it sounds dirty. Anyway, how, everybody here, uh, Rob, thank you so much for doing that thing. Uh, explain it to people exactly. So I was watching, I was on my phone and I, the CNN app, and I watched, it's called the arc, or like the arc of Donald Trump through the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And um, so you got to credit, this was their idea. All I did was I said, man, this would be great on GabNet. But without the commentary that they put on the screen, which was all the facts, Mm -hmm. The commentary was mine, but all the facts about the deaths and all that was theirs. So kudos to CNN for putting that together. They did all the research. I just edited it all together and put my voice in there to read the parts of, uh, uh, you know, that they put on the screen. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made sense. Yeah. No, thank you for that. It was, it was very good. Uh, let's, let, for equal time, let's ask Phil what he thought. Uh, here's the deal, man. 
you know that uh, according to Gallup, Trump's uh, uh, rating, uh, approval rating on you know, the coronavirus. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Um, uh, Bree, oh, Bree, yeah. m- mute your yourself when you're not on talking because all that clanking is kind of making noise. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Back to the thing. Here's mm-hmm. the deal, man. Trump, his approval rating on Gallup for his handling of the coronavirus is at 60 percent. So I guess, you know, yeah, there's there's been a lot of deaths and it has uh, come from uh, one person in Washington to, you know, what we have today, uh, you know, which is almost 100,000 people. Over 100,000. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's grown, but it's grown around the world. And at the time... No, it's not growing around the world. No. Do you know that you, the U.S. and South Korea have a 1.5% uh, rate of, uh, of uh, infected that have died? So uh, we're at the same rate as South Korea, which is the lowest rate Phil, of Phil, the other nation in the country. They continent. haven't had time to die. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's the way it is. It man. takes about twenty to twenty-five days to die from this, even if you're on a respirator. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and Phil, it uh, doesn't it doesn't drive you nuts that he said this is a pandemic? I've been calling it a pandemic forever. All of the leading sound bites leading up to that point, he was denying it. It's nothing. It's when the weather warms up, it's going to go away. It's nothing. We got it under control. We are, we, we're ready for anything. This is the kind of person you want leading this nation during a crisis like this. I think he's doing a good job. But, you know, it became a pandemic when mm-hmm. it became a pandemic. And it wasn't before that, you know. Well, so where's the preparedness that he told us he had? Well, he is prepared. We're yeah, prepared no, to what? Uh, he's, you're making respirators? Char- Charlie has, yes, yeah. Uh, Charlie has his hand up. They'll be ready in July, by the way. Go ahead, Charlie. Do you realize there have been over almost 20,000 new cases since yesterday? That's under control since yesterday. 20,000 cases. I think those cases have been there. The only thing is, is they're doing more testing. So right. now... He, 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 he refused okay. to spend a billion dollars on respirators <laughs> because it cost too much when we had a $2.2 trillion dollar bailout. You know that there's a warehouse in New Jersey full of respirators. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that they delivered, they, for, they, they sent to New York and delivered in New Jersey. That was a good idea. Union trucking. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yes. Yeah. You make a joke to kind of get out of the thing. Let me ask, hold on a second. I want to talk to Ross. I want to talk to Doc Winters. Uh, how you doing, Doc? Doc, can you hear me? Hey, mute is. Yeah. All right, had to mute my mic. Yeah. He's in, where in Australia are you again? What city? I'm in Canberra. In Canberra. Uh, how how's it been doing there? This uh, this this virus and what have you peop- What's Australia been doing about it? Well, we've had uh, throw the information up. Australia has been, has been pretty proactive in in the management. We mm-hmm. have the advantage of being an island country, so all our cases have to come by air. Yeah, but we've had uh, th- just under three and a half thousand confirmed cases in Australia. For a population equivalent to that of, say, maybe Oakland, mm-hmm. 13 Australians have died of the virus. 13 people have died of it. 13. One, three. That's pretty good, actually. Hmm. And how, hmm. but uh, let me let me look at the map here. How maybe many? Maybe that's prepared. Huh? Maybe that's what prepared looks like. Yeah, that's what prepared looks like. Yeah. yeah. Australia has. And the U.S. started at the same time. We've blown way past South Korea. What? What? No, we haven't. Uh, and uh, we have, we're have more than any other country in the world. We blew past China. South Korea is at nine thousand three hundred and thirty-two, Phil. Where we're at one hundred and four thousand seven. The percent. By, by the way, Todd Moore, if you're trying to call, I really. Oh boy! Let, let, let me let me see if we can do it. Okay. All right. Okay. Todd, I'm putting you on, but uh, if we have a problem, can you hear me? Okay. 
Todd? You. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, give us a picture. Give us a, uh, your, 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 we just have your. Uh, I got a picture? Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, Doc Winters needs congratulations. I think he has two children now. He's just had another baby. Oh, one? Oh. Uh, one? We got the one. We already got the one. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. Well, let me see here. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Todd, we're not getting a picture from you. It could be when you get too many sometimes. Yeah, it's Todd, we're going to have to hang up on you because uh, this is not, not going to work for us. Okay, uh, let me let me let me just try and how do I do this? I don't even know how I do this. Uh, remove from call. Okay, there we go. All right. Wait a minute. Now wait a minute. What what happened to? Uh, where is everybody? What happened to uh, what happened to Patrick? He's here. He's right there. Is he here? Yeah. Where yeah. Are, are you there, Patrick? I'm here. We don't have. I don't have a picture on you. Well, I. So. His picture is on Skype. Maybe. Uh, you turn your camera off and turn it back on again. Todd, I I can't take your call, Todd. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, did you turn Did you turn your camera on and off again? There we go. Now we got you. Okay, where were we? Oh yes, we were talking to Doc Winters. Okay. So, Doc, uh, in Australia, I'm look, trying to look, and Australia isn't even in, like, the top 20. Australia, 3,143, uh, and um, I, I don't have any information on deaths and so on, but uh, in Sydney, for instance, uh, they had 1,405 cases, and there were seven deaths. Four have recovered so far. So. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and so, what are you doing, Todd? I tr I'm trying to keep trying to tell you, no. Oh, is that your baby? It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, let's see the let's see the critter. Does he have an Australian accent? He has an Australian cry. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you? <laughs> He's upset with Trump too. <laughs> oh boy! And I, it was, you know, it was wonderful to be a child like that and to be able to cry and annoy your parents like crazy and and piss in your pants and get and vomit all over your your uh, your parent. You know, it's good. What? That, that's the cry heard around the world. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, right. I wanted to ask Todd though what what kind of uh, what kind of actions they're taking there. Is is he there again? No, I guess he had to take the baby somewhere. We'll ask him when he oh he, when no. he comes back. Okay, um, how you doing out there, uh, um, uh, Patrick? Is it uh, where you live? Is it cr going crazy at all? It's fine. I mean, I I don't know. It, it, same as everywhere else. It, you just deal with it instead of continually bitching. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take three. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yes. Uh, Everybody fucking crying about what Trump said or didn't say. Or... <laughs> because he's our fucking president, Patrick. He's not just some guy down the street in a bar. He's our fucking president. It's about time you admitted it that he's our president. Bitching about what a man says who's the most important man in the country saying stupid ass things. Yep. No. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. When do you get upset about what goes on in the nation with the most important, most powerful man? I don't even know if he's the most powerful man in the world anymore because we're not at that standing anymore. But he's still a powerful man who's a nut. You can't blame him for everything that fucking happened here. Because it's localized, too. I mean, the governors are making a decision, like in my state, you know, shelter in place or lockdown, whatever they're calling it. And you okay. can't control human beings from going out unless you do, uh, you know, uh, 
martial law. Well, okay, you, well, you know something? The truth. They talked about, uh, well, in China, they just had to take very draconian move, moves in order to, to stem the tide of the, of the coronavirus. But they did it. There, there hasn't been a case reported in a couple of weeks now. It's gotten, it's almost disappeared in China now. They did very draconian moves. But hey, you know, if it's going to save lives, you can be draconian for a short period of time. Just don't go back to it after we're through. The only way it worked is that uh, communism or the communist regime in China is all powerful and they can. Well, what I'm, you know, I'm that saying you, is, is that, you know, it's, it, it's too bad that we can't go to some kind of footing like that. I mean, I would have, if I were the president at this point, I would have declared martial law on this deal. Yeah. I never have wanted that. People have a right to go infect themselves if they want no, to. Phil, but they don't have the right to infect me, and that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Stay in your house, and you don't have to worry about it. Stay in your house, and you don't have to worry. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? The greatest uh, generation sacrificed in this country like nobody else. And we can't even ask people exactly. to sacrifice by sitting in their living room watching Netflix. I mean, I'm not staying home now. Want to do exactly. He makes a good point. What? They can't follow directions, like Rob said. Stay in your house for We're a few weeks. We're all spoiled. Weeks. Yeah. I don't mind saying No, because you know what it is? These We, a lot of these people, cannot follow instructions. Go out and get your groceries and come back home. People are just ignorant. They don't you can't even get your else. groceries. I mean, I looked at the grocery store today. I wouldn't wait in that line. Well, I go you to know. a small store. There's nobody in it half the time. I go in and I run out. Yeah, yeah. Well, Marjorie goes down to that store she at 7 in the like morning school. when they first open up, okay. and there are like three people, and she goes in, does a what, uh, remember the old TV show Supermarket Sweep? Did a supermarket <laughs> sweep, got everything <laughs> she needed, everything is, exactly. and got yeah. the hell out of there. You know. I usually go at 8 o'clock when I'm all asleep, and I said, I'm going to store, I think, in the morning. morning. You're hmm? lucky. What? You're so lucky. Three people in the morning. If I go first thing when it opens, mm -hmm. there will be 200 people there. Uh, there's no way you get in. Are you I having the toilet paper? Off. Are you having the toilet paper rush in, in Malaysia like we're having here? Everything. How about everything? How, how about in Australia, uh, Doc? Oh, where, where where the joke originated from? What were the, where the where the where the what originated from the? Where the joke originated from. The joke originated from. You were all the original reporting and all of the original like accounts and all of the videos of the fist fights, and everything. It all came from here. So you were hoarding. You you were hoarding toilet paper before we were. Yeah, despite the fact that Australia produces sixty percent of its own toilet paper, we don't import <laughs> hardly any. And they're all like, "Oh my God, we've got to have some." They were hoarding Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff is a national treasure. We will defend it to Allah. <laughs> you never you never you never diss Vegemite to an Australian. No. I mean or a Brit. Or a Brit. Or or Brit? Do yeah. do the British That's like Vegemite? I heard about it from a Brit. Mm. Some countries I don't know why they do that. Um Greece. You know what the biggest coffee brand in Greece is? A coffee you probably haven't had a drink of in years. Folgers. Sanka? Nope. Nescafe. 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 I used to drink that. That's instant. Yes. Nescafe. If you go into any place in Greece and say, I want some coffee, they will bring you Nescafe. You have to ask for like, and if you just want, you can say, I want Greek coffee, and then they bring it to you in their grounds in the cup. You know, but no, Nescafe is the coffee of, of, of Greece. I don't understand it. It's terrible. Well, I've, it's tried, I've tried I've tried Vegemite. Uh, I yeah. guess, uh, uh, Doc, it's kind of a, what could we call it, a, a, learn, <laughs> a learned uh, thing? Yes, it is. An, it is an acquired taste. It is. It is an acquired taste. Yeah. I'm, I'm losing it. We're, we're, we're brought up on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm losing all command of the English language tonight. I don't know why. Um, but as to Phil, what you were saying about how we're managing it. Yeah, how are you managing? It is it, it yeah. is a eleven hundred dollar fine if you're caught outside without a reason. If you travel interstate, you are mandatory quarantined for fourteen days. If you come internationally, you are mandatorily quarantined for fourteen days. All non-essential businesses have been shut. All non-essential services have been shut. 
and the defense force has been brought in to police the quarantine procedures. Uh, at the, that being said, though, we have a relatively low infection rate, mainly because almost all of our infections have come from overseas travel, mainly people flying in from Europe or America, which are the two largest places of infection, vectors for infection in Australia. And because of that, they've ended up having to enforce quarantine on anyone who comes in. Unfortunately, we get a lot of cruise ships because we're in the South Pacific and we have the port facilities to support them, yeah. kind of like how California is in a similar regard. The issue with that, though, is we end up having spikes yeah. whenever a cruise ship comes through. Hmm. Yeah, Kevin, you have your hand up. When did they, when did they put your uh, SIP in place? Uh, our prime minister had been working on a pandemic protocol pretty much like two, three weeks before the WHO did. Mm -hmm. so, so early March. Yeah, early early March, late February, early March is when we started on a pandemic footing. Well, they're way ahead of us. At least a couple um, of weeks ahead of us. Don't have a national. Yeah, a state by state. Yeah, I mean so we have a couple a... weeks ahead of us. Then probably easy. I mean, oh, like yeah. every like what we have at the moment, we have what the prime minister is calling is the national cabinet, which is where essentially the prime minister and the equivalent of the governors all meet on a daily basis and they assess the effect, how many cases have come through, what impacts it's had, mm -hmm. what effects it's had, and what policies need to be brought in. And then every night they come in, and then the following two days later they bring out new policies. We're in what they call stage two lockdown. Which is basically non-essential. No, all non-essential travel is, is is banned. Uh, no gatherings over over more than uh, like four people per. I don't know, one person every four square meters. So it's about one person every six feet. Yeah. yeah uh, no, yeah. No, no outside gatherings larger okay. than ten people. No inside gatherings. Uh, oh yeah, larger than. So how long? Person. How long has this been in force? It's been in force. Since early March. Early March. Is, is it like fully enforced? So have you like had, had to, have you had to stay indoors in your house uh, for the, all that time? No, I, I was working up until Monday. Okay, what do you do? I work at a museum, so I'm front of house in a museum. Yeah. Okay. Um, we weren't we because well, it was one of those things where museums were still technically allowed to be open, um, but non-essential like non-essential. Non-essential work didn't really start until Monday. So that's mm. when stage stage one lockdowns came in, was, was on Monday. Yeah. Prior to that point, it was social distancing, uh, travel warnings to international areas. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, you know, if you're at risk, stay home, that kind of thing. Right. We had the advantage of it being relatively small infection cells here. Mm -hmm. uh, the border, the Australian border closed to all overseas traffic on last Saturday. Mm -hmm. As in, like, not, well, today's Saturday here. Like, there probably wasn't last. much traffic anyway, though, because a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of those countries that people would have been coming from, I, I don't know, I wouldn't want to get on an airplane. You know. Well, we had a travel ban to China and Italy and Iran before most people did. Mm -hmm. And then we extended our travel ban, ban from Italy to all of Europe. Uh, America was the last place that we had it instituted. And by that time, we had closed the border. So no foreign nationals are allowed into Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point, only, for, only Australians who are allowed out uh, for compassionate grounds and for humanitarian grounds. Do you remember that movie uh, and the book on, by Neville Shoot called On the Beach? On the Beach, yep. You remember what it was about? Yep. Australia was the only country in the world left after a nuclear holocaust. Uh, and, what and, happened to New Zealand? Uh, I, I don't know. It wasn't in the movie. Okay, so I... But... Uh, <laughs> You know what a you know they, it, Mad Max was in Australia. You know Chugga Chugga. Yeah, was, Mad Max was in Australia, but also further to what also what yeah. Bill was saying earlier. Yeah. Um, the federally, so at the national level, we have level two um, lockdowns, mm -hmm. but in the two most popular states, New South Wales and Victoria, they've already instituted level three lockdowns, which is basically you're only allowed outside of your house if you are going to the doctor to a pharmacist or you're going to get supplies. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And that's it. And if the, and if you're caught out, you know, like food courts are closed. Like there's no like cinemas are closed. Like all entertainment is closed. Sports been cancelled for uh, like. Three weeks right. We, well, we've done pretty much all of that too. But our president wants to try everything, go, get to get everything going by Easter. You know. Well, this morning, uh, Scott Morrison, who's the prime minister, has said he'll put the Australian economy in hibernation until this is over. Mm. Mm-hmm. But basically, what happens is is that no more debt, no debts will be accrued, no rents will be collected, no uh, funds will be managed. Mm-hmm. The government will. Well, they haven't quite figured out how to work this work. The government will basically subsidize, kind of like what Britain's done. Mm-hmm. And once this is over, it'll be like it never happened. So all the industries will then pick back up again. I see. Okay. Uh, yes. Any uh, idea? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, yes, uh, Bree. I, I want to pick up on the last few words that you were saying there. Once this is all over, and I, I, I've been running this through my head as much as I can. I read the articles. I just watched the Bill Gates newer uh, online TED Talk, how does this end? Because if you think about it, the day we go out is the day that the numbers start upticking again. So like we're, we're saying somehow that we're sequestered and that this is going to stop it. Mm. It's not. They're still, they're still out there. The virus can live many, many days. And, and in fact, it could be in, it could be in any one of us right now. Well, it could also, it lives, could also, they say, to, yeah, they say it could go dormant too until... The next winter, you know. Right. Well, so Australia's... I don't see an end unless we have a vaccine, like you know, for polio mm-hmm. or uh, you know, or the the seasonal flu. I don't see an end to this, and the economic damage is going to be so severe when the food supplies. Run. I mean, I hate to be the prepper. Nobody's really talking about it. I don't see how we get out of this. I think it's catastrophic, and I think many many people are going to die, not just from the the, the pandemic, but the knock on yeah. effects of it. I don't see, I'm a learned individual. I'm not trying to be alarmist. I don't see how, you know, I, I know we're, we're flattening the curve right now, but h- how is it that the curve doesn't go massively up the day we, you know, raise, yeah. the, raise the, the roof, uh, so to speak? We need a little uh, happiness here. Phil, I'm sure, will give us some very positive <laughs> advice. I never live in the house. <laughs> no, uh, what, Doc was, uh, 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 what Doc was saying is that everything is, has been frozen uh, you know, economically, bills and, and so forth. In the 70s, uh, we had some massive inflation, and, and we had it because President Ford put in a uh, price control restrictions trying to stem inflation. But as soon as those price control reflic- uh, restrictions were taken off, we ended up with massive inflation that, uh, you know, uh, crippled our economy, uh, 18% interest, things like that. Uh okay. You know, so I'm just wondering if that move is going to is going to create. I, I think if you go back and look at that, it wasn't as strict as uh, Doc is talking about, and, and nor nor may, uh, the same solution. That all debts are forgiven for the time being. All rents are not to be paid. Everybody just stay in place. Let's get through this thing. And that that doesn't sound like what Ford did. What Ford did was a capitalist version of the same thing. Yeah. Still rent. It didn't work, and it created inflation. But I have one more question for Doc. Are you still experiencing the fires that uh, were ra- ravaging through Australia uh, a few months ago? Thankfully, uh, the fates were took mercy on us before they started to double-end us with this as well. Uh, by February, the fires had been exhausted. Ah. And then we had floods. <laughs> Well, you had floods. Be- you had floods because you didn't have the. What about locusts? You need locusts. No, but the thing is, that floods. That's April. That's April. When you have when you have fires like. They are growing and they've moved into Saudi Arabia. If you haven't noticed, the locusts. Just search it. Locusts, Africa, Middle East. Okay, but anyway, the point that I'm making is that um, uh, the um, where were what were we talking about? I just. Uh, we're talking about the inflation. Yeah, the inflation and so on. Um, you know, I just think that the United States isn't capable of doing what it's got to do because it thinks it's so treasures its um, uh, its capitalism that it can't think in terms of you know this is something that's got to be solved in 
in a way that helps everybody. And, you know, uh, as I said to you, I think, uh, last night, Phil, how do you like the fact that the president just came up with a solution that basically is socialism? Yes, uh, uh, Rob Alfano has no, his hand. I'm, I'd like to know how it is that you can freeze everything in Australia mm -hmm. because unless you don't, you're not... Um, Unless you're not using some pl supplies from Australian companies and such, because if somebody's making money. There are companies out there. There are there are there are services that need to operate and run. There mm -hmm. are people who have to go to work every day. You know, the hospitals and they're using supplies. They have to buy stuff. You could freeze stuff, but I don't see how you can how that really is an end all be all. Basically, if it's considered an essential service, uh, it will continue as, right, as, as normal. But as the Prime Minister pointed out, um, if you shut down a business because they can't pay their rent, you're not going to be able to find someone to replace them. So you may as well just let the cafe yeah. or the yeah. uh, you know, retailer just close its doors. Right. You're not getting any rent because they're, they're not paying for it. They, you're not, and and, if and you... then once it's all over, they'll reopen. But what the government's also doing is the government's also subsidizing incomes. Right. Um, Australia has a very large casualized workforce, and they're taking this pretty, pretty toughly. Uh, the advantage it was what we've been doing is we've been staggering the shutdowns to give our welfare system effectively the means of supporting itself as it comes through. So, like, we went from having an unemplo unemployment rate of, like, 5% up to, like, 15% within the course of a week. Yeah. And then basically... Staggering the shutdown so that mm -hmm. our infrastructure stays open as long as possible. Josh Wheeler's been quiet tonight. Any comments, Josh? Uh, you know, I haven't really um, noticed that a lot of the things they've tried to do to curb some of this. I've just noticed people really aren't following them. I mean, you know, for example, we have. We have one of these, like, stay-at-home orders in Ohio, but, you know, and one of these, quote, you know, essential businesses only type things, mm -hmm. but no one's really observing it. I mean, you know, like I said, my company isn't shutting down because they say they're essential. I mean, you know, but, I mean, I, I haven't, I... Uh, all you really have to do... By the way, in case people are wondering, Josh, business. Josh works for a paint company. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all you have to do to be an essential business is just say that you are. That's really. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, the, the, the order had been in place maybe like two or three days, and I came home from work one night, and the house up the street, four or five houses up the street, was having their carpet cleaned. Yeah. The difference I mean, is, is that um, you know, I mean, I, I yeah. mean, it's like it's a joke, really. Yeah. And so well, until it, people take it more seriously, it's it's probably just going to continue to get worse. Well, the advantage is, is that what? here, what they've done is that the government's basically said these jobs are considered essential jobs, and if you're not one of those jobs, your your, your business shuts down. Right. You know what? You know what the problem we have here in America, I think, uh, and I I, I listen to. Um, uh, Andrew Cuomo every day because I love listening to him talk. I love the common sense he brings to this. But he did something today which he was saying, he said, you know, he gave the pep talk, the big word, we're, we're New Yorkers, New Yorkers are tough, and New Yorkers are good to each other. And I just think that he maybe is barking up the wrong tree on that one because the New Yorkers I saw today were on the street not wearing masks, not trying to prevent the spread of this. I can't find a mask. I would love to have one. Yeah. I was at the store today. There were no masks. I was in the hospital today. I had to go to Kaiser. Oh, I wouldn't have gone to a hospital to save my you life. I had to get diabetes for the virus. You had to get what? My diabetes meds, and they wouldn't mail them because they have to be refrigerated. So, uh, you know, there was people uh, going in, they made you stand six feet uh, behind each other. Uh, then they uh, put Purell, uh, Purell on your hands. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't need it. And they said, you have to. And uh, then uh, they, they put a tag on you that you've been Purelled. And then you <laughs> stand in another line that uh, you're six feet apart. But they were so disorganized getting me the drugs. At, at one point, I just said, you know, I, I'm out of here. Yeah. 
it was uh, it, it was it was a total mess the way they were uh, setting these things up because they kept well, sending me. It's, this it's, guy. it's like Bubbles used to say it was Kaiser, and that's better known as doctor assisted suicide. Well, they were on their way to doing it, and there was some guy uh, about it's six feet from me coughing, and nobody said yeah. a word. Patrick's got his hand up, and then uh, yeah. Bree's got his hand up. Yes, Patrick. I said earlier, and you just confirmed it about New York. I mean, you can tell people all you want to stay inside, and we're going to do what they want. Well, I you, mean, yeah, but if you, it, Patrick, if you told them you go outside, and if you don't have a good reason, we're going to fine you five hundred dollars. I don't think they're coming out so fast. Right. We have it here. You can get fined. I, I. There's something with the police. I don't think it arresting you, but. You can get cited, and it, I mean, I haven't been out in two weeks myself, um, but I know people are out and about, and I mean, what are you going to do? I, I, like I said, short of martial law, so... Well, then, but, but what does this say about us? I mean, here we're being told that if you want to stop this thing, if we all stay inside and we don't come out for a couple of weeks, we can probably slow this thing down. But people in aren't doing California, that. But people aren't doing that. Bur uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, misdemeanor. Uh, wait a minute. To... Yes. Okay, Phil. Because other people have their hands up. Go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Just finish. In California, it's a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor is punishable by up to a year in jail and a thousand dollar fine. Uh, if uh, if you break the uh, uh, if you're out and and congregating. Uh, amongst other people, mm -hmm. but they they don't enforce the laws here anyway. I mean, you can drop trow and take a shit on the on the, on the sidewalk, and you don't get arrested. You can walk into a Walgreens and steal oh. stuff off the shelves, and you don't get arrested. Uh, you know, so well then I'm moving to California because apparently you can steal stuff and shit on the sidewalks. Uh, Bree, yeah, um, a couple of things here. Uh, the telcos. Uh, in Malaysia have all announced that during the movement control order, that's what mm -hmm. they call it, the MCO, mm -hmm. uh, everybody will get one gigabyte of free data per day, which I thought was a nice, you know, uh, thing to do. The other one is uh, when I when I rode my bike yesterday to the grocery store, the security guard was all over me about parking. I parked next to this Burger King mm -hmm. instead of where the bike rack is. And mm -hmm. the reason I do that is the bike rack is across this little alleyway and it's near a bus station. It's a little bit risky to park there, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I park at the, at the Burger King and in the outdoor dining area, and they don't have dining now. The whole area is just empty, and I, I park there. He was, the, the, he was all over me for parking there. Uh, he, he came very aggressively towards me, whereas in Singapore, you have to stay one meter apart, or it's fineable by like $10,000 or something. So I'm moving away from him. He's thinking that I'm disrespecting him, but I'm, I'm like, that guy could very likely have it because he's in touch with every single person who's walking past him, you know, and so it's just misguided. Then meanwhile, the people waiting in line for the grocery store are not waiting the appropriate distance uh, apart from each other. He's not concerned about that. So, you know, I, I don't know how we defeat this when people are not listening to government messages. Even security guards don't even understand it. The, the messaging is out there and they're not listening to it. It doesn't give me confidence that we can beat this thing. And as I said, the day that it's over is the day it restarts. They're buying themselves a week or two or three to get the hospitals well, ready. Well, I, I, I just think that, you know, a, as a society, we should we shouldn't have to, we we shouldn't have to have any of this enforced by fines or anything else. Wow, we can kill this thing if we all stay indoors. Let's go stay indoors. We know it's difficult, but if we do it, they say it's going to clear it up. But there are people who just look at those kids down in Miami in Fort Lauderdale on spring break. I mean, come on, California too. Yeah. I that they're coming down with the virus. Those spring break kids. Yeah. That uh, many of them are starting to come down with it. And they're and they're taking it back home to grandma, okay, and their parents and people who are at risk, you know. So I mean, it it, it but 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 you know, I mean, I all I'm all I was thinking today was, you know, if China was draconian, at least nobody's dying anymore. Yeah. You know, and 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 
uh, today Cuomo said, you know, this thing is killing business in New York, and the amount of tax we're going to collect and the amount of money we're going to have to put out to solve it is going to perhaps drive this state into, 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 into being broke. He said, but I'd rather be broke than have another dead person. I mean, Stryer has said that they're happy, they, they're happy to put a Stryer into a recession to fight this. Like yeah. The, the government has said, it's like, we will use whatever we have. And if it ends up, we're in a recession, well, we're in a recession, but our people will be alive. How is your how is your prime minister handling this? Is he doing it satisfactorily, do you feel? Do you... Um, he is handling it a lot better than he did the bushfires. I do make add that with a caveat is that I am technically a government employee, so I'm not meant to publicly disparage the head of state. Um, <laughs> But he did cap a lot of flack during the bushfire crisis mm -hmm. of how he handled it. And mm -hmm. I'd say that it is a marked difference between yeah. what he did in January versus what he's doing now. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. He's, he's handling a lot better than Trump is. Um, That's what I was going to ask you. You obviously know. You, you obviously know. I'll go to you next, Charlie. You, you obviously know what's going on in this country right now. Uh, uh, what's what's your perception of Trump and how he's handling it? I'm not surprised if some states don't secede after this. If, if this what? Say that again? If, if, I would not be surprised if states started to secede. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't feel that he has created a sense of security among the people. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, I don't... I, I'm sure you all heard what our lieutenant governor said about how people my age and older ought to just sacrifice themselves, just throw themselves on the grenade and go out there and work all the jobs and get yes. the virus to die. Yes. And he him. really said that yes. that way? Yes, he said it. Really that, said he, that. he said it exactly in that way. The first thing Australia did was lock huh? down the aged care facilities. <laughs> <laughs> because we knew they were at risk. In, in, in retirement homes because it's spreading like wildfire through retirement homes if you want to read if you want to read a good column about this uh, go to go to uh, timegoesby.net Ronnie's uh, site she has an article on it today about what the Texas governor did and what several other uh, people in government are suggesting about all old people falling on the grenade you know if it comes time for the respirator, hey, the 40-year-old gets it, not the 80-year-old Alex. There's your death panels. Right there. Yes. Death panel. I mean, to be honest. What, what, wait a minute. What, what, wait a minute. Death. Phil's laughing at this. you find this funny? I'm yeah. I, I said there's your single-payer health care, the death panels, everything. You know, when you have enough people. We don't you, have single-payer. We have the death panels. Well, no right now, payer. if you got the coronavirus, uh, you're not paying for any uh, any health care. The government's paying for all of it, including tests. So that lieutenant governor who said that is 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 for single payer health care? I think not. I don't know. Australia has single payer health care. I said this is an example of what will happen. No, if it's, no not. it's not. That's the, that's exactly the rhetoric that you bought into. It's the exact opposite. It's the truth. That's what. <laughs> okay, we'll that's see. Complete bullshit. Yes, uh, uh, we're seeing the lines, we're seeing uh, the fear, we're seeing it all. Mm -hmm. Bree? Well, we're seeing a country well, that's being I was, uh, I, I've been concerned about the way that Trump keeps attacking governors and telling Pence not to, don't call governors who don't treat you right. Yeah, you so heard. That's the message. The message is, hey, those governors are asking for too many ventilators, and they should have ordered them before. Don't call them. We're not doing anything for them. That's not the right way to be handling this. Nope. You know, we need, we need competent leadership. We're not getting it. That's why it's going to spiral. It's going to be far worse. We, he we had are a... living in a time where people have a belief in something. They believe that hmm. President Trump's doing a great idea, uh, doing a great job. They don't have facts. It's... We because they're polls, not this. IQ measurements. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's go, we Pat, Patrick. In a world of trouble. Uh, um, 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 uh, Tony has his hand up. Yes, yeah, Tony. you know, I heard that too when he said that. What uh, Trump said, you know, they they have to act nice to you. Trump is the type of guy. He, you can see it now, Phil. Unless you suck his dick and see how great. He Do you is. know what he said today? You know what he said well, today? He said, "The I, I nobody's thanking me." I would like some common courtesy of thanking me. What? You know, I would like, I would like, I would like respect. Is pretty much how he put it. And I, 
I don't focus this that. thing. Where, where do you hear this stuff? I heard him say it, Phil, out of his own mouth. I don't, uh, you know. Jeff, oh, Jeff, you're hey, agreeing hey, with hey, me, aren't you, Jeff? You heard it. He had, he, had a, he had phone calls with all 50 governors. You know, well, how, is he, how is he excluding anybody if he's talking he's to arrogant, all like Today he was saying, that, I just don't like the fact that they don't respect me. Well, well screw you. Okay. This isn't about you. It doesn't matter. He's just telling you what's on his mind. Well, what on his mind is uh, is a very bad uh, hair thing, whatever that I, is. You know what they should tell him, the reporter? The t reporter should tell him, you know, excuse me, Trump, you work for me and the American people. Yeah. Well, he, he never worked for anybody in his life, so why should he start now? He's the guy who always had everybody, he had everything, and this is how he um, operates in, in his business. If you don't yeah. say me, tell me how great I am, you don't get a raise, and you don't get a job, and you don't get this. Yeah, did you, did you hear it today, Kevin? Did you hear Trump today at all? Kevin? Yeah. Did you hear Trump today at all? Uh, no, I didn't hear oh, him today. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else uh, but me hear him? I guess you know some some um, um, broadcasting organizations are saying we're not going to carry his uh, his uh, press conferences anymore because we feel that he's he's stoking fear in the country and 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 giving out with wrong information and we don't like that going over our airwaves. Imagine the governors saying, are running this country right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, he this doesn't want that. They're doing a decent job. Well, if there's anybody who's the president of our country right now, it's it's uh, Mar it's Andrew Cuomo. I mean, I know you guys have been able to see oh, him. Alex. You know what I saw today? That mm -hmm. lady who's the doctor behind him. Mm -hmm. she, and I'll send you the video. She came out with the reporters and she said, I can't say it exactly. Trump is so analytical when we're giving the scientists and giving him the information, it's his business acumen, how he can break down the data and absorb it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen great things. Yeah. Phil, he's, he's lucky he got out of high school because his father probably paid every education he got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, I mean, Cuomo has been doing a splendid job here of just I mean, giving us, killing. huh? What'd you that's say? That's killing Trump, that Andrew Cuomo. Oh, he hates it. You can tell he is so bothered by the fact that Cuomo is getting so much praise for the way he handled himself, you know. I got to be the one to get it. New York has got the most people dying, and he's doing a good job. Yeah. All right, everybody talk about me in the next uh, 1 o'clock. You say this, and you say that. And, and when I did, it smells great. Okay, yeah. let everybody go. And Cuomo uh -huh. begrudgingly has, has thanked him for certain things, and then he goes on and says, even Mario Cuomo loves what I'm doing. He didn't say that. He said he liked the things you were that you were coming through with stuff that he asked for. But he had to ask for it. He had to know what was needed because Trump wasn't going to know what was needed. Bree. He's not a nice guy. We're going to... I hope that the Internet stays on, our, our electricity stays on, and that we can, uh, you know, chronicle the end of the world here on the uh, citizens panel because I don't see again I don't see a way out of it I'm getting worried no one has told me no, how we're out of it I, I've said once we go once we say mm -hmm. movement controls over we start going out again mm -hmm. it spreads again so you can't go out right away no you got to let this die that stops you got to have a, a period there where you make sure that it completely dies off unless you got to go to church on Easter Sunday or I can't wait to drop dead in church on the way home yeah, yeah, I'm not going to church. You're gonna have to thumbs up, just mm -hmm. like the common cold. It'll oh, stop. On, oh yeah, just oh, like the common old, cold. Only six months. So. Yeah, the common cold isn't this lethal. Yeah, common cold doesn't kill you. Yeah, but it spreads like the common cold. No, but yeah, the common but cold doesn't kill you, Phil. Yeah, Phil, I come understand, on. But it goes away eventually. Yes, but this isn't the common cold, Phil. A strain this it. is the no it's not it's a virus it's like a flu it's not like a cold it can be in you for 14 days or something and be asymptomatic yeah it can no kill problem. a healthy adult who has perfect health in a matter of days it can kill young it can kill old it's we just it's crazy we had a nurse we had we had a male hospital. nurse in a hospital here look very healthy yeah. who just died of mm -hmm. it you know, and he died in a matter of days. 36 or something? Doesn't sound like the common cold to me, no, Phil. I don't, I, 
Hey, Nobody never heard of people coming from the floor like this. You didn't. Hey, this morning, a woman was on the sidewalk uh, at the corner of our building and uh, collapsed, and uh, there was a bunch of cop cars there and an ambulance. Uh, but I don't know if it was from the uh, virus or if it, uh, you know, she just had a heart attack. But uh, it's it's interesting. They're dropping dead in the streets. Well, but you don't know that they were dropping dead in the streets because you didn't know what was wrong with her. No, yeah, but it was interesting. What did you do? Just stand by and watch? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't around. She, she. I asked her if she called the police, and she said they were already there. Aren't you asked who? The woman? No, Faye. Oh, uh, Faye. Like, oh, okay. Oh, so Faye came in and told you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have I'm you lucky. been? I live in a county. I live in a county. There isn't one case. Thank God. I'm afraid you know you have a you have a but you do yeah, have but, a, you don't have the density of population like a New York. I mean New York and, is and it, I'm two hours from an airport. Yeah, and yeah. it's not a cosmopolitan area around here. Yeah. This is a very rural kind of Mayberry, if you will, kind of town. Don't you think know? you're so safe because the guy oh, that died here, the guy that died yeah. here was sure. he's 20 miles outside of 30 20. Two miles outside of town, and he died. You know what's going to happen? I think, Alex. What? I, told Just you know, I think after this, you're going to see two more today. from New York. Mm -hmm. They're going to start leaving the suburbs. They're going to get out of here. They don't want to be in dense areas. Well, so, uh, uh, living in a dense area well, is certainly our great sin that we're paying for, huh? That's the problem with New York and places like that. It's a denser area. Mm -hmm. You get like spread out. Work. It's going to be it's going to be less of a chance. Right, right. You know, in our area here, we're we're a, a county of sixty thousand. We have a dense area, and then it's spread out. And we've got we got two more today, and there's fourteen in our area. One, uh, Jeff. One Jeff's side. got his hand up, and turn, turn your mic on, Jeff. Your mic isn't on, okay? Uh, Jeff, your mic isn't on. Nah, there we go. You. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Connecticut is uh, finding. That a whole bunch of New Yorkers are leaving New York and coming to Connecticut where they can rent a place or live in a place or hang out with there their cousin or whatever. And it's going to affect the number of people who are going to die in Connecticut. Yeah, what, what they should do is stay in place, stay in your home, don't leave. Uh, that's the best thing. You know, that, that's the best thing. You hold in for a while. Now, I granted, I have to say thank God for this apartment I'm in because it's so big that we don't want to kill each other. But if it were like my old two-bedroom uh, two uh, or one-bedroom apartment yeah. downtown, uh, we'd probably be strangling each other at this point. You think, uh, that they're, you think they're fleeing New York to go to Connecticut because they're worried that if they do get sick, at least Connecticut's... Uh, Hospitals won't be so overrun. You've got a better chance of survival, sure. Yeah. I yeah. thought they were going to Florida, uh, and that they, uh, the governor of Florida was uh, talking about the New Yorkers coming down. Yeah. They, they come down by plane. They want to test them, I think. Yeah. And if well, they, they're going to take it. That, that's the same they're governor that, kept, that let those kids go out on those beaches and catch the coronavirus. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, there's our theme that's uh, playing. Oh, wow. Boy, another good one tonight. Uh, a, a lot of people listening, a lot of people watching. Uh, and I want to thank, uh, first of all, Rob Alfano, who did that really good, uh, great opening. Uh, thank you, a, CNN. A, a great uh, thing on, on Trump and his change of heart, shall we say. Uh, let's also thank Charlie, and let's thank, oh, look with the baby, there's Doc Winters. Um, Ross, as I like to call him. Call us some more because you may not be able to get out of the house, okay? We love hearing from you. Uh, and your picture looks great, too. Uh, Phil, thank you so much for being here. Tony, thank you. Jeff, Patrick, Bree, uh, uh, Kevin, who's been frozen for a while here, and, and, uh, and um, 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 uh, our old friend and uh, companion, as it were, um, Josh Wheeler. Um, oops. Everybody's kind of blanking out there. Didn't what? Todd didn't yeah, Todd, sorry we couldn't get you on. All right. Anyway, uh, that's it, actually, for tonight. Um, 
why doesn't everybody give give a big wave goodbye and I'll wave back at you, okay? That's the way we always do it. Okay, there they go. All right, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, I hope I got everybody you know, because uh, uh, it's hard to remember. And uh, Todd, we wanted to have you on, but unfortunately, when we get this many people going on the citizen panel at one time, it becomes a problem. So I just wanted you to know that. Anyway, um, uh, thank you all. Uh, we'll uh, take a couple of days off, and then we're going to come right back at you on uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, Tuesday night, right? 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And it's our anniversary today, too. We've been married eight years. They said it would never last. <laughs> and they were right. Anyway, good night, everybody.